you? Or good morning, I should say. Good morning. You see if everybody's awake. <laughs> we had a big breakfast this morning, so see if y'all are on your toes or not here. That's right. <laughs> you know, I kind of wrestled around with what the Lord wants me to share you know, this morning. I'm kind of wondering about the direction and uh, that it ties in with the Sunday school message. So the Lord knows what he's doing. <laughs> Uh, I might not always understand. You know, that's kind of what Jesus was saying there to his disciples after he, remember he washed uh, Peter's feet. He said, you might not understand what I'm doing now. You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will you know, later. You know, how, how often that is sometimes in, in life. Amen. Amen. We might not understand right there at the time, but then maybe further along we can we can understand. Amen. Uh, I believe the Lord wants to speak about leadership. You know, that's kind of something that's in the headlines and Something that the Lord's been putting on my heart for the past couple weeks. So uh, we'll look and see what the Lord wants us to know about leadership this morning. The title of the message is The Master's Business. The Master's Business. The Lord is showing me through a study and through preparation of the sermon that leadership is about direction. And it's also about responsibility. I think those two things go hand in hand. Direction and responsibility. And so as I was preparing uh, the message, uh, I began looking there at the book of Genesis to begin with. You know, it's always good to kind of look at beginnings. If you want to know where you're going, sometimes it's good to see where you're at, where you came from. And so in the book of Genesis, we see there the first man, Adam, and we see there is a theme in the Bible that I want us to catch this morning. There's a theme in the Bible uh, there's, there's a lot of direction that we see, right? So it's, a, it's really tied to land, land, right? So you see it with Adam as he's in the land and he gets exiled from the land, right? You know what I'm talking about? The Garden of Eden, he's there one minute and then he's exiled, right? Then we see it with Israel, right? Israel gets into the promised land, they're there, and then they lose the land, it's exiled. And then they're brought into the land. So there's something in the Bible, there's a common theme that the Lord wants us to catch here. And it's, 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 it's about leadership. Right? So you see the first man, Adam. And then Jesus is also called what? The second Adam. Why? I believe it pertains to leadership. Adam was an irresponsible leader. He didn't do the things that God wanted him to do. And so he lost the land. And the land is all about responsibility. And the Lord wants us to see that this morning about leadership and direction and responsibility. So first you see a land is given to Adam. It's called the Garden of Eden. It's given to Adam. This is the responsibility. Notice that there's a responsibility that Adam, the first man, has there in the land. What is it? Well, it tells us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15... That the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, in the land. The Lord God took the man and he put him in the land. For what? For what purpose? It tells us there in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. To work it and to take care of it. That's the responsibility. The man has a responsibility in the land. Man is tasked by God to work the land and to take care of it. And so we can say that man is tasked with responsibility. You know, we all have a responsibility. All of us has a responsibility. It can be big or small. And the Lord wants us to understand that, that we all have a responsibility. And so in essence, we can think of it as this, that the Lord God took the man and he put him in the land of responsibility. Hmm. And so often I was pretty good at shirking from responsibility. A lot of times it's a maturity that's involved with that, isn't there? To meet our obligations, to meet our responsibilities and to know what those are. You know, I had to do a lot of stuff with my taxes. You know, it's that, it's that special time of season, right? I had to file all my taxes, I had to take all the information and all that. And I told one of my coworkers, I said, you know, this whole adulting thing is... <laughs> 
Not something, you know, I, I, I really wanted to do. But it was necessary to meet my responsibilities, to meet those obligations. And life, we find, is full of these responsibilities. And either we can meet those responsibilities where, where we are, or we can run away from them. Here we see the first man is put into the land of responsibility. He's there for a task, something to do, to work the land and to take care of it. God gave man responsibility. And with responsibility goes with a life full of meaning and purpose and mission. Oh, you know, I feel so bad for some people sometimes, right? Where it doesn't seem like they have a mission or a meaning or purpose in life that they shirk away from responsibilities and they're not motivated. I, I was trying to help someone this past week and you know, it seemed like he just didn't have any motivation. He couldn't even make it to work. He didn't even call in to work and he was wondering why, why isn't he a pro producing? Why isn't he productive? And so we went and we had this young man go and get evaluated and assessed from you know, Daymark and then up there to Caldwell Memorial. And he just doesn't understand why he can't be productive. And it's just, it's so sad when we, we, we see someone who's void of meaning, void of purpose. It's like they're lost, isn't it? Notice I said lost. see that there in the Garden of Eden. But God has something for man to do. And I want you to catch that this morning. What does God have for the first man to do? And I would say God has for the first man to be a responsible gardener. A responsible gardener. The first man is to be a responsible gardener. Why? Because he's following in God's footsteps. He's following in God's footsteps. He is to be about God's business. We're told that it's the Lord God who planted the garden. You know God plants. Did you know that? Oh, how we want to know more about the Father. And I'm telling you this morning that God plants. He plants, he plants this garden of responsibility, a garden that gives life meaning and purpose and a mission and task at hand. Do you know that God is a gardener? God is a gardener. I'm telling you about my father. My father is a gardener. Jesus said, my father is the gardener. God plants, he plants the garden of responsibility, and there he places man to be involved in his business. What is God's business? What is God's business for each one of us here this morning? It's for growth. My God, my Father, is about growth. He wants to see each one of us grow, to spiritually grow, to be an overseer of growth. For you see, in the garden of responsibility, things grow. We see this, that God gives direction. That he has this world that is based on law and spiritual principles for growth. And if we want to grow into the mature Christians that God wants us to be, we have to know about the Father's business. That he wants us to grow. You see, God gives direction by his word. Do you want to grow? Do you want to grow spiritually? God gives direction by his word. We see this. We see at the very beginning that God speaks his word and things happen. God speaks his word to the land and it produces. If we want to be productive Christians, we need to let God's word influence us to be in us to grow. You see, God speaks to the land and it produces vegetation. God tells the land to be a producer. You know, we can think of the land as a responsibility. Remember I told you that man 
God put man into the land of responsibility. God speaks to the land of responsibility. To do what? To be a producer. And it produces all sorts of different things. Plants and trees. Are you falling along this morning? The land has a responsibility to produce plants and trees. That's what it's made for. And so we can see this modeled out in this form there in figure 1A. You see that there? God gives direction, the word, to the receiver. We can see God speaks to the land that produces. But we can also see that God speaks to us, the receiver, to do what? To produce. It's a responsibility that we have. We all have this thing called responsibility. Every single one of us, every single person on earth has this thing called responsibility. God gives the direction, the word, to the receiver to produce. That is the responsibility. And when the direction is received, when you receive his direction into your life, you're responsible for producing. Just like the land is responsible for producing, we, when the direction is received, we are responsible for producing the desired outcome, and that is obedience. In this case, the land produced vegetation. And so the land was serving its purpose. Its purpose is to produce. What is man's purpose? To model God. The image of God. We are in the image of God. And God is a gardener, we are told. And he planted the garden of responsibility. And man is made in the image of God. That's why you see the first man is a gardener. He is modeling after God. For as I explained, God planted a garden of Eden. Man is modeling God as a gardener. We are to model after God. And Jesus came to explain to us what the Father is like, that we are to be like our Father, our Heavenly Father. And here we see that man, the gardener, is given responsibility to work and to take care of what he is given. And so I believe the Lord is asking us all here this morning that we also have a responsibility. What is our responsibility? What are we to do with what God has given us? What do we need to do to take care of and to work what God has given us? And why do we need to work and take care of what God has given us? Can we just sit and ask ourselves that question this morning? Why do we need to work and take care of what God has given us? Think about all that God has given you. Why do we need to work and take care of it? Another thing I saw here with man being put in the environment that he was. Notice that man is put into the garden of responsibility where he sees things grow. Things are growing all around him. What purpose was it for him to be there in that place of growth? He sees things growing all around him. Right? There's so much we can learn from nature. I believe God put him there in that environment of growth so that Adam could see what that's what life is about. You see all things growing around us, right? Those of you who take care of, I heard Bobby talk about how many uh, goats uh, that were birthed this week, right? We see things growing all around us. What is God trying to show us in nature? And when things are all growing, we too should be growing. The Bible talks about maturity, that we are to be growing as disciples, growing as Christians. When we see things growing all around us, we need to make sure that we are growing spiritually. I believe that's why God put him in an environment of growth, to watch things grow, to watch the land produce. So what is man's part of all this? What is our part in all of this? I believe it's to facilitate responsibility and spiritual growth. And so many ask the spiritual question, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of it all? Does my life have meaning? Where do you find the meaning? You know, many would say that they're, they find meaning in their work. Right? 
You work, you find meaning. My question would be to you, well then what happens when you stop working? I know we have a lot of people who are retired here. Where do you find meaning if you're not in work, involved in your work? You know, so many times when we meet people for the first time and we make those introductions, you can ask them to tell a little bit about themselves. And most people will lead off how? By saying what? Their job. Well, this is what you do, but that's not who you are. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you? When you take away the job, when you take away the title, who are you? And I believe that's what Adam lost. And it was for a purpose. When he lost his job, when he lost his gardening position, it was to show him that he's more than just a job, that he's more than just a word, that life has bigger meaning than just for what you do for a living. You know, work can give our life some meaning, but for reasons that go much deeper. The reason why I would pose our work gives us meaning is because of these two necessities. This direction and responsibility. Direction and responsibility. Inside of us all is this fundamental drive towards meaning. It's meaning to be valued to be loved, to be needed, to be included, to give back, to use our gifts, a place of belonging where we are given purpose, value, and meaning, a place where we can contribute. Oh, how often I see that in the need for churches. And when people come in, they don't want to just sit back, but they want to give back. That should be the purpose of it all. Right? A place where they feel needed. A place where they can contribute. A place where they have something to offer. And God places each one of us in a, a place of responsibility and there we can receive direction. You know, we're all in a place right now. You're in a place say that you're in a place emotionally something going on inside of you emotionally you're in a place mentally you're in a place physically you're in a place spiritually you're in a place and you might be wondering this morning why you're in that place and how did you get there and what is your task I believe we are to grow where we are planted grow where you are planted the Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden. Like plants, we are planted. Like plants in a garden, we are strategically placed there for a purpose. In Acts chapter 17, it says, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. You catch this in verse 27. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. We are his offspring. So you see our positioning, our placement, our environment is done with ultimate meaning in mind so that we would seek God, reach out for Him and find Him. My question to you this morning is, are you seeking God in the place where you are? This place of responsibility? And what is He asking you there to work and to take care of? Is He giving you a responsibility? In the place where you are to work and to take care of? And are you tending to those things God has given you? Are you being responsible to the task at hand? Do you know about the master's business? You know, in John chapter 15, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. 
So what is this father's business? What is the master's business? I pose to you this morning that is gardening. Gardening is the father's business. For Jesus said, my father is the gardener. And the father wants each one of us to be able to grow. To grow spiritually. For spiritual development. And growth is a process. It begins with the seed. He plants the seed in us. First Peter says, you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but in, of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. And James it says, he, God the Father, chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. You see, the seed is the word. It is truth. And through the living and enduring word of God, through the word of truth, we are born. You either receive the word or you reject the word. You see it as the land, right? Sometimes when the land is real hard, the water just runs off. It doesn't receive the water. So too our hearts can be like that. They're either soft or hard. You either receive the truth or you reject the truth. It's what you do with the truth that matters. James says, accept the word planted in you. Jesus commenting on the late leadership that was in the land said every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. He told his disciples and the people around him, lead them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. You see, you have blind leaders, leaders who do not see the truth, leaders who reject the truth. Jesus said that those are the plants that the heavenly father has not planted. Lead them. They will be pulled up. You're blind leading the blind. You see, for us, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to the truth, to grow. And growth is a direction. Do you want to grow spiritually? Do you want to know more about your father? It tells us how to do that by the direction, by the word that he gives us. It produces growth. Jesus tells us to remain in him and grow. Bear much fruit. That is what we are to be doing. Bearing much fruit. Jesus says, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You see, it's one thing just to know about it. It's another thing to show it. Jesus said, show others that you are my disciples, that you are learning, that you are growing, that you know about my Father's business. Responsibility is to Remain in and abide in. You see the branch. If you look at a plant, you see it has branches. And on those branches, they bear fruit. And the branch must remain in. It must be dependent on the vine to bear fruit. Jesus said no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. So how is your life? This morning reflect the dependence upon God. Is there fruit? Can others see that you are a disciple of Jesus? How is your prayer life? Jesus said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. How is your prayer life? Does it show up a life of surrender, of dependence upon the vine? What about your life's direction? Is it one of dependence? See, a command is direction. We can think of it as a military commander giving a command, marching orders there to the troop, the soldiers. They follow command. We see commands in the Bible. It's a direction. Go this way. Don't go that way. Jesus said, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's command and remain in his love. What is the direction? What is the command that we are all to adhere to this morning? Love as Christ loved. That's what Jesus said is his command. Love as I have loved you. Do you know about Christ's love? How he loves? In this we have leadership. It's a direction and a responsibility. Amen. Amen. So I ask for you just to think about that question this week. 
What has the Lord given me that I am to work and to take care of? And I ask if, if you are doing that. Showing yourself to be Christ's disciples. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that you have given us so much. Lord, we have obligation, we have a duty, we have responsibility. Lord, you want to grow us. You're in the business of gardening, we have seen. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we continue to mature in our growth, that we will bear much fruit to your glory. Again, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would place on our heart our responsibilities, what, Lord, you have called us to take care of and to work. Lord, I pray, Lord, we are doing that. We're thankful, Lord, that you continue to grow us. Help us to be in your word, Lord, that we can continue to produce, to know you more, and to show others by the fruits that we bear. Lord, bless our time, Lord, as we leave here, Lord, leave us in your peace. Lord, help us to get closer to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.